Welcome everyone to this month's board meeting. Uh, Dr. Pinlin, could you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone to this month's meeting. Do we have any uh, people that want to speak to the board, Pam? Any that have been turned in up here, I don't know if there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak. Anyone in the audience that would like to address the board? Let the record show all board members are present except for Ms. Belen Rose. Uh, presentations by individual groups and organizations. Um, actually, we need to go to item 1.4, approval of minutes. Okay. Move Sorry. to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call a question. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Ms. Pena. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item uh, 1.7 presentations by individuals, groups, and organizations. Item 1.7.1, Dr. William Sarata, college president, will recognize individuals who have retired from the college district. <coughs> Chair Haggerty, members of the board, th this is certainly, um, retirements are always bittersweet for the institution. This one is in particular bittersweet for me as this gentleman has an infectious laugh. He was last night at um, our, our 50th anniversary gala and I heard the laugh again as I walked down the hall and thought he hasn't left. <laughs> much to my chagrin, he's retiring. Uh, much too young but well deserved. Uh, this is Mr. Richard Stevens who's an occupational educational lab assistant. Uh, Mr. Stevens has worked at EPCC since 1982 first as a work study, then as a bookkeeper for the Student Life Office, and over two decades now in the business lab. He has loved working for EPCC ever since he started. Richard created and managed this, the co-op program for the job placement office at EPCC. He was a member of the Institutional Effectiveness Committee, the Hospitality Committee, the Safety Management Committee, and currently serves as a member of the Time Capsule Committee and the Leadership Academy. Richard was an accomplished tennis player in high school, earning several scholarships, and was also recruited by the FBI to be a special agent. But he opted not to take advantage of those offers and enlisted in the U.S. Navy. He spent four years abroad, the, uh, aboard, ab aboard the aircraft carrier USS Enterprise, where he learned bookkeeping and payroll. He pursued an accounting degree at EPCC and received an Associate of Applied Science in Accounting degree and an Associate of Arts in Business Administration degree. He attained a Bachelor's of Science in Business Management degree and an MBA in Accounting. He volunteers his spare time at, at his church and his community whenever and wherever possible. He enjoys camping, hiking, hunting, and fishing at his favorite watering holes. Richard plans on returning, thankfully, to EPCC to teach accounting part-time. Mr. Stevens, thank you so much. If you'll come up so that I can provide you with your plaque. And thank you for 32 years of exemplary service to the college.
item 1.7.2, optional presentations will be made by the presidents of the Classified Staff Association, the Professional Staff Association, the Faculty Association, and the Student Government Association. Beautiful day, esteemed board, mem board members, Dr. Serrata, attendees. Um, happy 50th uh, birthday, PCC. Um, PSA is very happy to announce that Dr. Andrea Quiroz is our new PSA liaison. And um, we're very grateful to her and grateful to Dr. Julie Penley for allowing her to work with us. A special thank you to Dean Rick Webb for his assistance the last few years. The Professional Staff Association has been uh, busy working on several projects. First, uh, we are currently holding elections, and these elections are for the Vice President and Secretary, and we'll, the voting will be finished at the end of next week. Special thank you to Jenny Hidon's area, because they're the ones that do the tabulation of the voting and keep this all confidential. Mm. Second, we're having our very first karaoke extravaganza on July the 17th at noon. And this is going to be in benefit of student scholarships. Uh, so we're asking for a $5 donation per ticket, which gets you in the door. And it also includes a slice of pizza and a drink. And um, everyone's invited, but the tickets are limited. <laughs> Uh, lastly, we're having a candy fundraiser also, and this is for the Keep Up Paso Warm campaign. And for this is our blanket drive that we hold in the fall. And so we go out, we, with the proceeds that we get, we go ahead and we get blankets for that event. So we, this is also the, the event that partners with, we have several partners, including the Sheriff's Office. And this is, the, this is only one of the many ways that EPCC is able to give back to our community. Um, we're also very grateful to the board for allowing us to participate in shared governance. And here at the college, we enjoy working closely with Dr. Peña and Albert Yanis and human resources. We also work closely with uh, Dr. Ron Stroud regarding our policies and procedures. And we would like you all to know that they, these gentlemen are a wonderful resource. Um, a special thanks to both Josette Shaughnessy and to Julie Penley. We appreciate everyone's support of uh, PSA efforts. We also thank everyone and we wish them a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Anybody else? Item 1.8, communications, none. Item 1.9, Board of Trustees business. Item 1.9.1, discussion and action regarding the amendment of the professional services agreement with Scott Hulls PC for paralegal services. Okay. Who brought this one? Who, who, who brought this up, Dr. Sorkin? What are we what are we discussing? Are you guys asking for more money? What are we doing? <laughs> Ms. Shaughnessy, do you wanna do you wanna begin this? Yeah. So in the original contract, uh, the the cost of uh, services provided by paralegals in, at the Scott Hall's firm was not included. So Scott Hulse has requested that we reconsider that item. Uh, was that, did, did we get that sent to us before the board meeting? Excuse me, sir? Did we get any kind of, what is this gonna entail? What is it gonna? It basically is to include uh, a, uh, for Scott Hulse to charge the college for paralegal services, for those services that are actually uh, rendered by paralegal instead of the attorneys which entails a lower rate than being charged the full rate currently charged by Scott Hoss. And I believe that was uh, 125. $125, $125 per hour. That's correct. 
Is it requiring board action? It does. Uh, because it was not included in the original contract. So it's a reduced amount. That's it's a reduced you're amount, yeah. from the original uh, 175. Well, there was, not, there was no original no amount original for paralegal, but what this would allow is for Scott Halls to uh, basically delegate some of those services that can be handled by paralegal instead of being charged the rate of $200 per hour by and, attorneys. And you've already negotiated the rates? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Move to approve. Second. Just really and quickly for discussion, um, I think that's a, that's a good idea in terms of the, the using the paralegal services. Uh, you're not getting charged the full rate of the attorney, and so hopefully um, as we move forward with Scott Hulse, Mr. Ortega, Ms. Marin, as, as you all move forward, that there would be a consideration to really, if we can or when we can, delegate those services to the paralegal to really reduce those those legal services rate. Of course, not not uh, trying to go out without your, your legal expertise, but I think this is a good move and this is a good amendment and inclusion to the contract. Thank you. Uh, further discussion. I, you know, I, probably is a good idea, but I'm wondering: is this going to be a matter of uh, presentation where we're all of a sudden we're going to come and the first thing that the board chair is going to ask is, "Hey, what's this about? How come we didn't? You know, what's the discussion in the presentation?" I think it really would behoove us to have some sort of advance notice that there's going to be something like this come up. Uh, I don't like to be surprised. Yeah, let me apologize to the board that I take responsibility for the board not uh, receiving this material. Um, I do apologize that it was not in your packet that was sent out. Um, it was a negotiation between Scott Holson and, and the staff and, and the administration. We felt that it was uh, a fair um, hourly rate and that's why we're bringing it forward. But, but duly noted that we will ensure that this is sent to the board in a timely fashion as we all receive Amber Alerts. But I also agree though in terms <laughs> of having any discussion, although we would get the material ahead of time, um, it also behooves us to have this discussion in public to have that um, understanding of why we're charging it. So although, yes, agreed that we should have a material beforehand, for benefit of the public, we should absolutely have these discussions in public as well. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Call a question. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Ms. Nahada. Aye. Ms. Pena. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item 1.10, board reports. Item 1.10.1, .1, treasurer's report, May 31st, 2019. No <laughs> action is necessary. Item 1.10.2, president's report. Item 1.10.2.1, .1, Dr. Sarata will update the Board of Trustees and audience on recent events that have transpired at the college. Chair Haggerty, members of the board, um, let's begin with last night's event uh, to uh, Associate Vice President Carrie Moe, to her co-chair Lisa Elliott, and every member of the 50th anniversary committee. Well done. It was an incredible event last evening. Um, it was sold out. We had so much, uh, so many attendees that didn't realize everything that the institution has accomplished over the last 50 years. Uh, what a way to set us up for the next 50 years. So well done and thank you all for those of you that were able to make it last night. The full board was here. Um, again, it was a wonderful event. Kudos to everyone that was involved in it uh, and that was led by Carrie Moe. So thank you so much, Carrie. <laughs> I do want to uh, report to the board, uh, and Dr. Graham was kind enough, despite lots of travel um, challenges, to uh, go with the staff and I uh, to DC to receive the inaugural Seal of Excellencia from Excellencia in Education. There were, um, you think of all the institutions of higher ed through the United States, over 3,700 institutions of higher ed, over 1,100 community colleges, uh, in Texas alone, 50 community colleges, 37 public institution, public universities. Uh, we were one of uh, four, three in the state of Texas, rather, who, was, who received the Seal of Excellencia, three community colleges, one university, our sister UTEP also received it. It is quite an accomplishment. Kudos to all of our faculty and staff for intentionally facilitating student <coughs> success for the students that we're privileged to serve. Uh, very, very proud of that designation. It is not in per perpetuity. We will have to reapply for that designation and based on data is how they determine whether you receive the seal. It is not an award, it is a recognition of the work that we have done at the institution. I was stopped um, while I was in DC 
by the lead reader who said, I read the applications and when I read El Paso Community College, there was no question that you would receive the seal. So kudos to all of the team. I'd like to thank Lucia Rodriguez. Uh, she's not in the audience, but she was the point person on filling out that application. So well done to all of the faculty and staff and administrators. Chair, that concludes my report. Item 1.11, consent docket. There are no items on the consent docket today. Item 2.0, administration none. Item 3.1, discussion and action to approve full-time staff and faculty recruited in positions funded by the institutional budget. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call a question. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Ms. Pina. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item 3.2, discussion and action to approve full-time staff and faculty recruited in positions funded by grants and or <coughs> contracts. There are none. Item 3.3, information items, resignations and retirements, no action is required. Item 4.1, discussion and action on the annual renewal of the Microsoft Campus Agreement for Microsoft Academic Licensing in the amount of $223,734. I hear a motion. Move, uh, motion me to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Ms. Pina. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item 5.1, discussion and action on the approval of a contract award to Hellas Construction Incorporated for the baseball field synthetic turf replacement project located at the Valle Verde campus in an amount not to exceed $715,883. I have a question on this, sir. Was this put out to a bid or did we uh, have other uh, Estimates on the cost? I can't, and, and, and just so if I can interrupt, excuse no me. Motion. But um, I, yes, I, I, that's definitely a question to be asked. But for the benefit of the public, can somebody from the community college come up and give us an overview of what this ask is for um, and its purpose? Good afternoon, uh, board members and Dr. Serata. Yes, Mr. we have Mr. Uh, Felix Enihosa. Can you please come up? He'll be able to answer any questions. And uh, um, my name is Maria Lopez, and I'm here representing uh, Dr. Uh, Kenneth Gonzalez. Okay. Good afternoon, board. Good afternoon. Um, which question do you want me to feel first? I, I, this is uh, an item on the agenda, so if you can just give an overview of what the purpose of this ask is for. I, um, I do want my question, question answered only because there's already an explanation of what this is for on page 66. Absolutely, but for the benefit was, of the public, we should probably also get an overview as well. Agreed, absolutely, but the question should definitely be asked. The baseball field currently is in an unplayable state. Um, since the last time the turf was installed. And what we're doing is we're bringing in a new turf um, that uh, will replace only the turf, and we did not use uh, what we would say, I guess, uh, a, si a situation in which what we want is to replace the turf with something better and uh, of better value. Currently, the baseball field right now, as it stands, is unplayable. And then there's a safety issue to all our student athletes. And not only our student athletes, but the student athletes that come and play. So from that point on, this turf must be replaced. The other option would be to rent a field or drive somewhere to rent, which I do not feel comfortable having student athletes driving to somewhere to practice back and forth. And that is why we're replacing the current turf. In reference to how we came up about the bidding, I guess, we went with a co-op, which was, I was then guided by uh, Mr. Gallardo as to this process. And we did receive two quotes. With respect to that, I think we all received a letter, something from Field Turf, okay? And I don't know what uh, the letter, you probably have seen that, 
but it appears that they supplied this, okay? And so I'm curious as to how, and even in a co-op, they were not included. I mean, the, I, I'm sure there's several, but, but there's also a comment in here that, you know, it's a co-op bid, but also said that administration went a step further and requested two other quotes. So if they're not part of the co-op, but you requested two other quotes, what, what's the story? I mean, how come we have field turf that's been here servicing all along, and all of a sudden they're at least not considered? I, I, don't, I don't have a, you know, I know what the dog in the fight is, but I'd like to hear the other side of the story. So, so it, it, as you know, as, as, as the board well knows, when you use a purchasing cooperative, the, the requirement to go out to bid has already been complied with. Uh, we did seek, we went above and beyond, and we sought two quotes, one from Field Turf, the company whose letter you have, and one from the recommended vendor. We did get the two proposals, both of them through the same source well purchasing cooperative. So both of them are based on the same cooperative. Um, Coach Felix and Amy Gardner and Rick Torres uh, made up a committee of three people that looked at both offers and that committee made the decision to recommend the offer of Hellas as best value. Just to bring the new uh, trustees up to date, uh, since we started baseball, how many times have we done repair to the fields? We've only uh, astroturfed it once, but we've had multiple repairs. I would say at least 10 times we've had to repair the high traffic areas by going in and patching over and patching over. And like any other patch, we, we take care of the place that's, that's uh, damaged, but it doesn't fall in sync with the rest of the field. So there's kind of like a lip. What year, what year was that, Mr. Um, I believe we have we had a turf in 07, and from then on, maybe every other two years or three years, depending on the condition of the turf, we we've, we've needed it to be uh, patched. Is there anything in the new contract, uh, Mr. Gallego, that says that if something comes up in a year or two, we need a patch, or what kind of guarantee do we have on this? Yes, sir. The, the offer from Hellas includes a 10-year uh, warranty. So they'll take care of any problems for the next 10 years? Yes, sir. Anything that's associated uh, with a defect in, the, in either the installation or the turf itself. So, Mr. Gardner, the two, two questions. First of all, reading this letter, it, it makes, you, makes you think that they're trying to say they weren't included, but in fact, they were solicited for a bid, okay, and so they were considered, number one, correct? Uh, correct. Okay, not not only were they solicited, they offered okay, a proposal. Offered a bit. Now, number two, generally when we see something like this, then we and there's a committee that meets, we see some sort of a breakout of the meeting of the criteria mm -hmm. and what the different ends. And in this case, there's no uh, record of those considerations and how it was rated, included in our agenda. Yes, sir. And and that's because we we considered this a two quote a process a quote process. We didn't do a request for competitive seal proposals because we're using a purchasing cooperative. We, in other words, legally, we didn't have to get two quotes. Okay. But you opted anyway, if you had this information, you opted not to supply it to us. Yes, sir. Um, and the reason for that is because it would be difficult to compare apples to apples. Both offers included a base offer and at least five or six different alternates. I think one of them it was nine different alternates. And it just depends how you, which alternates you choose, and it's very, very difficult to, to compare apples to apples. Okay. Uh, the, both offers are available for your review if, if you'd like. Okay. No. Is, uh, my question is, does anybody from the athletic, uh, the national athletics that uh, sponsor our, any kind of athletics, do they come by and, and inspect our fields to make sure that the players are protected? That's left up to each individual school to make sure that we have a safe playing field. Um, that's part of the NJCAA and the WAC Jack to make sure that, that there's a very limited chance for the, the actual field to cause an injury to any student athlete. So we're in charge of keeping our fields maintenance. Mr. Hinojosa, do you believe that the repairs that you have had to make, it was, was, do you believe it was because of a normal wear and tear or was it because of lack of the quality of what we already had? Uh, one of the reasons that we went with Hellas was because of, it was 
it was explained to us that their quality of AstroTurf is, is above and beyond what we have right now. And, and the reason that we keep going with a, with, with a bid in which we're having to band-aid it every year or every other year instead of getting a quality product that's going to actually be a maintenance with it, I, th I think that has a lot to do when we're actually asking for 700K and plus. Right, and, and I think that's for me, that's one of my concerns. This is a very big high ticket item, over 700K. Um, in terms of for planning purposes um, going forward, I mean, these do seem like issues, not just with the turf, but maybe something else that is exceeding at least the 500K mark, half a million dollars, that there is at least an evaluation and analysis to determine like what are those items that we're looking at. I mean, because right now we're in um, the, last, the last meeting here in June, hopefully, maybe expecting that this gets done in the fall when there really could have been or should be in place planning for these type of items so that we could budget. And then going back to the, to the bid process or the vendor process, is this truly the most affordable, economical, prudent way to go um, in, in looking at these kind of items? And so for me, my hesitancy and, um, is to not approve that until that evaluation takes place either at budget moving forward, again, not just with this item, but other items that, are, that, that do need that repair. I don't deny, and I, I definitely understand from, from your perspective, the need to invest in those fields and not incur those costs of continuance, ma continuing maintenance, but that evaluation, in my opinion, should take place, better, better planning, if you will, um, so that we know as, as the college what to expect moving forward. Thank you. May, may I offer uh, just a piece of additional information? Um, setting aside the alternates, the base proposal, and, and what we asked for is the replacement of the turf, the base proposal including the bonding that is required from Hellas, the recommended vendor, is $570,650, 570650. The base proposal from Field Turf including the bonding, is $570,952.27. Um, there, there's very little difference in that base proposal. There's very, di very little difference in price. However, the Hellas proposal includes a 10-year warranty and the field turf an eight-year warranty. Can I ask a question, Coach? Yes, if we were to consider and it may be just to consider soccer. Is this the same field that could be used for soccer teams? Um, I believe so. Yes, ma'am. The turf is high quality. The turf is actually the turf that's actually, for those of you that are Cowboy fans, uh, the Dallas Cowboys are using it. They've, they've gone into a 10 year with Hellas because of the quality. Yeah. Of you just lost the ball here. You just, just lost the Cowboys, cowboys, cowboys really? really? For those of you that are. Uh, no. but, it, what, it, what it comes down to is we need, Hellas does not subcontract the fibers that are being put on the field. Okay. Hellas actually manufactures the fibers. So we can actually, if we wanted a special kind of mix, which is way beyond mine, they would do it for us. This is, okay. it, they're, they're, they're the ones that produce this type of fiber. When would be the next opportunity to return? Is it, would it be next year, next summer after the season ends uh, to, to do an, to to do this project? To do this if project? We, if, it, if this item does not get approved today. If it, well, if it, this item does not get approved, well, well, I'm not sure what the process would be or where we would go okay. forward. For me, it, I would then have to start looking at renting a field for us to okay. play. Not only just play, but practice, travel, and, and then you start to get into a kind of, uh, a kind of worms there. And, 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 re and it, would, it would not be possible, in your opinion, then, to um, see about doing upkeep and maintenance until an evaluation or an analysis could be done? Is that not sufficient I'm then? No, be because okay. it's, it's worn. Got it. So, so every okay. time we, it, it's like if there was a piece of rug at your house and there's a big hole in it and then you just put another piece of rug on top of it, yes, sir. there's a lip. And then you put another piece, there's another lip. So okay. as these young men are running to first or to second, if they trip on that lip That's and right. they blow out an ankle or blow out a knee or, or the ball hits it just at the wrong angle and shoots out, that, that then is a, is, a, is a part 
that we could have controlled, sure. but we didn't because okay. we didn't take care of the, the field. I have a legal question. Can I ask him, what is the shape of our softball fields? Our softball field is in great shape. Okay, so we're not, we're not gonna have it. We're not gonna, <laughs> we, we, we have, if you want, we'll take a tour and that field is immaculate because we went down the right way. We, we got the equipment that actually helps us maintenance it and we have it maintenance, uh, it's, in, it's a beautiful shape. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to make a motion to approve a contract award. Second. Uh, are we through with the discussion? No, you okay. can discuss all Just, you want. One of the questions says, would this field be adequate for soccer? And I remember the Chihuahuas made a big deal about a raising and lowering a pitch amount. So what would the soccer field be essentially in the outfield and you won't have to worry about your pitcher's mound? Well, the, the pitcher's mound that, w that will be included will either go up or down, depending. Well, so, so what happens is, and to my understanding, the pitching mound is the only place that will be dirt. And that's because of the, the mechanics of pitching. You don't want to have uh, a pitcher get his cleat caught as he's throwing on turf. So it's, it's different dirt. So, so, so what happens in the pitching mound, you, can, you take the dirt off, there's no more mound, and then you would put AstroTurf on it. Okay, so it's, it's not one we're going to raise and lower, but that actually becomes part of the soccer field. Right. Second of all, just, just to be clear, we just got through going through the budgeting process. This says that you're going to get a loan from the auxiliary fund and not to exceed 10 years, so you're going to pay back roughly $72,000 a year. Where's this money coming from? This money comes from fundraising, it also comes from great budgeting, and it comes <laughs> from, our, from, from the revenue that we generate to, to keep our sports going and that's the uh, tuition. And you have a historical record being able to generate 70 plus thousand a year. Um, we have a historical record that generates uh, 1.1 million more or less. A year? Uh, a year from, from tuition. If, I, if I'm, I think Ms. Shaughnessy may or may correct me. But we're, it's not like we're gonna give, a, it's, not, it's gonna be a 10 year loan, 10 year payment. We're going to be very aggressive in paying it back. And no as, interest, as, right? Excuse, and no, no interest. interest. I hope not. <laughs> no, we check them. Okay, good. Is there any problem with the warranty if, if for some reason down the road, as Dr. Graham mentioned soccer, if we start using the field more than just baseball, is that going to mess up our warranty? Um, with that, I don't know. I'd have to actually talk to, to, hell, to the, the people from Hellas. Any more discussion? Nope. Yeah, out of curiosity, what is it going to cost us a year to rent a field, move guys around, and all that other stuff that doesn't get approved? It, it's going to run... Ballpark. <laughs> ballpark it? I'd say, I'd say in one semester we're going to at least put out anywhere between thirty and uh, 40000 And, and that's, not, that's not to include the, the, the issues that we have with having student athletes drive to and fro, That's trainers different. drive to and fro, and, and. And what's the availability of facilities, sir? Because I know that in the district where I work, everybody's up to the fields and they don't get them. They, that, we're, we're at the mercy of the city, the county, and any other high school that would let us practice on their field. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Call the question. Mr. Uxer. Qualified, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Sanchez. Uh, before voting, uh, again, I just want to reiterate, for these high ticket items, th the college really needs to consider doing better planning um, and foresight on how we're going to address them. Obviously, this is needed, as, as you had expressed. Um, but in the future and moving forward, I'd like to see that planned or discussed during our budget process so that there is that assessment of that inventory that we have because um, right now I feel backed into a corner and, and obviously there's, there's a safety, potential safety issue involved and so um, with that I'll vote yes to move forward. Dr. Graham. Yes. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Ms. Pina. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Chair Haggerty and members of the board duly noted, I, I will ensure that we have an annual evaluation of the field, that we document the analysis, that we have it on file and as we come forward hopefully in 10 plus years um, for the next field that we will have that document and you will be briefed on a regular basis with regards to it. Thank Can you, you also ch make sure, Dr. Sarata, that you check on the warranty if for some reason we, we will use we'll it for up. more than just baseball? Yes, sir. 
Does that mean you're considering it, Mr. Hegarty? I consider everything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Good Thank job. you. Thank you. Item 6.1, discussion and action on the approval of a five-year contract with Blackboard Incorporated to host and support the EPCC Virtual College in an amount not to exceed $2,046,820. Move to approve and I'd like to note that I followed up and these uh, faculty were included in a discussion as to whether or not this is a good idea. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? Oh, would you mind sharing some of those comments that you had? You said that they that you followed up with faculty and they thought it was a great idea? No, I, I didn't follow up with the faculty. I uh. followed up with Dr. Serrata and one of the gentlemen, I don't have his name in front of me, I do uh. have it on my other schedule, um. uh, to see if faculty were included in the decision process. Oh, okay. Yeah, Ms. Sanchez and, and Dr. Graham, uh, and I'll ask Dr. Hiron to weigh in as well. So the, the two big uh, vendors in this particular area of uh, online learning are Blackboard, and, and the most recent one has been Canvas. Uh, I've spoken to lots of other presidents in the state uh, that have gone from Blackboard to Canvas. Um, they believe it's more intuitive. Their faculty uh, really enjoy it. I asked our team to take a look at it. Our faculty overwhelmingly chose to stay with Blackboard, and it is their decision, not mine. And so we had, we are taking their recommendation. Dr. Hiron, I don't know if you and your team have anything else to add, or, or Mr. Smith? No, I, I'll just uh, add that it was a big point of discussion in the Faculty Senate, and uh, as you said, overwhelmingly the faculty chose to stay with Blackboard. Um, one of the reasons is that our sister institution, UTEP, also uses Blackboard, so students will get a consistent experience as they transition to UTEP. Thank you. Any other discussion? Dr. Caron, I, I noticed that you decided to let Mr. Smith answer that question. You didn't want to participate? <laughs> That is correct. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Uxa, the reason I um, thought Mr. Smith was the appropriate vice president is because Blackboard falls under the instructional area. And he's the one that worked with the faculty, the deans, and his VP. I, I just want to give you a chance to talk. OK. <laughs> I totally support Blackboard. Because <laughs> so, initially, we did have some adjustment issues, right, when you first transitioned to Blackboard? That is, well, we've had Blackboard for many, many years. And there was an issue at one point several years ago during a, a migration that we did an right. upgrade. And that caused some issues. But all of that has been addressed. OK. Any other discussion? Call a question. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Ms. Pena. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item 6.2, discussion and action on the approval of a contract award to Go Go Nurses, Inc. to provide course-specific supplies to nursing students in an amount not to exceed $176,939. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Call the question. Mr. Usher. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Ms. Pena. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item 7.1, discussion and action on the approval of a contract award with the College Board to support required academic assessment testing of students in an amount not to exceed $120,000. Move I have to some, approve. I have some questions. Right here, second. Second. Any discussion? I just would like a little bit of clarity from our legal on um, regarding the sole source, because again, I see this as a sole source, and, and I'm uncomfortable with this sole source testing when everybody's generating testing materials. Right, well, under Section 44.031J uh, of the Texas Education Code, the Texas legislature includes a laundry list of different items that they classify as sole source. And so that would be one way to provide guidance to the college in terms of determining whether a specific item is sole source or not. My understanding from Mr. Gallardo is that there's also an, an internal process that the college undertakes to try to uh, obtain a confirmation from someone from uh, a vendor who claims that it is a sole source provider, they get a 
something in writing from a director or an officer, someone that has the requisite authority to bind the company to tell your procurement or purchasing department that they are in fact sole source. In the event that that provider was not sole source and we were to enter into a contract with that specific vendor relying on that misrepresentation, potentially one avenue for the college would be to pursue a claim as, as an example for fraudulent inducement. And there would be potentially other remedies uh, that, could, uh, that the college could avail itself of. Typically what happens also, uh, Dr. Graham, is that the market sometimes also takes care of these types of issues. Other prospective competitors of this specific vendor, if they determine that they also could provide these types of goods or services, they could protest and come forward and pr provide the college notice that there's other avenues or other vendors that actually provide these services or goods besides this specific vendor. But are we covered uh, with the letter that uh, Mr. Gallardo usually secures? It would be something that we could use to our advantage. Uh, and I think uh, the, the practice that Mr. Gallardo has and his team, I think it's effective because it's an extra step that we could use to protect ourselves. And again, we could rely on uh, Chapter 44 of the Texas Education Code to make sure that we're following the guidance from the Texas legislature and we're focusing only on those categories that they've outlined are only sole source. So for example, if you're purchasing something that has a specific patent, a copyright, uh, or if you uh, have a, a component of a piece of equipment that's malfunctioning, you would probably have to go back to that specific manufacturer because that's the manufacturer that fabricated that piece of equipment and there wouldn't be any other sources that you could potentially obtain that product from. So there's things that we could do, again, to take a look at, uh, again, the, the legislature, the chapter 44 of the Texas Education Code and making sure that we're following through with the vendor to make sure that we get guarantees from them in advance. Thank you for that explanation, sir. Any other discussion? Call a question. Mr. Uxer. Aye. Ms. Sanchez. Aye. Dr. Graham. Aye. Ms. Nahara. Aye. Ms. Pena. Aye. Mr. Haggerty. Aye. Item 8.0, Community Service None. Okay. Uh, when's session. our next meeting, ma'am? Um, next meeting is July the 24th. Okay. Next meeting is scheduled for July the 24th. Dr. Srock, do you have any idea when we're going to schedule our retreat? Judge, at your request, we have currently tentatively scheduled for July 26th and 27th. Um, Dr. Whelan is available, so we will fly her in on the 25th. Uh, we have an all day on the 26th and then until 1 o'clock on the 27th of July. All right. Okay. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? Exactly. So made. Are we going to go to executive? Okay. We're going to take, <laughs> we're going to go into executive before we adjourn. The Board of Trustees may conduct an executive or closed session pursuant to Chapter 551 of the Texas know. Government Code for one or more of the following reasons. Consultation with its attorney to seek or receive legal advice or consultation regarding pending or contemplated litigation or for any purpose authorized by law. Discussion about the value or transfer of real property. Discussion about a prospective gift or donation. Consideration of specific personnel matters. Discussion about security personnel or devices or discussion of certain economic development matters. The board may also announce that it will go into executive session on any item listed on this agenda if the subject matter is permitted for a closed session by provisions of Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code. Any vote regarding these items shall be taken in open session. Discuss all EEOC charges and lawsuits pending against EPCC pursuant to the Texas Government Code Section 551.071. Discussion regarding possible acquisition of real property by the district pursuant to section 551.072. Okay, board is back in session. Uh, just a reminder, our next board meeting is the 24th, correct, Pam? Do I hear a motion for adjournment? So made. I hear a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are Thank you, Judge. Thank you, members.